Now that we've had a broad look at oceanography, we're actually going to look a little bit closer at the ocean floor and features that are on the ocean floor. Bathymetry is the study of ocean depth and topography of the ocean floor. So if you remember, our topography is going to be the lay of the land, so mountains versus flat area, topography, hills, dips, valleys, so on and so forth. One way that we've figured out what the ocean floor looks like is by this echo sounding, which is similar to echolocation and sonar. So we have these ships out in the ocean, right, and they're going to send this sound wave down to the bottom of the ocean, and it will bounce off the ocean floor and back to the ship. So the time it takes to return to the ship indicates the depth of the ocean floor. So let's say there's this big mountain over here, okay? So the signal is going to go down and bounce back, and it'll be like one, two, three, four. Okay, so four seconds. Whereas if it went all the way to the bottom, it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that time indicates how deep it is. The longer the time, the deeper it is. A much easier and quicker method is actually to use the satellites. So satellites can gather a lot more data a lot quicker than a person can on a ship. So how this works is that the sea surface, or I'm sorry, the water will pile up slightly over undersea mountains and it'll dip here where there is a decrease or where there's a trench. Now we're talking features of the ocean floor. So immediately, so like, hey look, it's Virginia Beach, right? Okay, so here's our beach and the continental shelf, this is called the continental shelf, so basically from the coastline to the drop-off, as Marlin would like to say, right? It's called the continental shelf, or so this would be like the shelf edge. All right, it is narrow at active continental margins, meaning it's small, and it's wide at passive continental margins, and I'll tell you about what I mean here in just a minute. Immediately after the continental shelf comes the continental slope. All right, this is where water depth rapidly starts to increase, just like a slope, right? Hey, look, it's a negative slope, too, as you remember from algebra. Okay, so it, this is where it changes from continental crust to oceanic crust. And at an active continental margin, this slope will end in a trench, okay? At a passive margin, it ends in what's called a continental rise, which is just this kind of deposition of sediments. So let's look a little bit closer here at this diagram. All right, you see here is our continental shelf, and then as it starts to rapidly decrease, right, our, that's our slope, and then it looks like we're at a passive margin because we are ending at a continental rise. There's no trench. All right, so looking a little bit differently at active and passive margins. Over here, we have an active margin, okay, because here we have our continental shelf, continental slope. Oh, look, it's a trench. So we call it active because there's a lot of activity. The plates are moving. It's active versus a passive margin over here. Here we have our continental shelf, our continental slope, and then, oh, look, kind of really nothing. So it, it ends into a continental rise. And you can see a little ways down the line here we get some seafloor spreading or divergent plate boundary. So the continental rise. There's this gently sloping region here. Look, here's our continental rise between the continental slope and the ocean basin or the ocean floor. So it's, we get lots of sediments that have been deposited because they kind of just roll downhill. And like I just talked about, a continental rise is only located on passive margins because on an active margin, it would be a trench. Our ocean basin, so we're talking at the bottom of the ocean, we have what's called the abyssal plain, which is the flattest area of Earth's surface. It's about two and a half miles below sea level, and it's just kind of, you know, just like what this picture looks like. It's just kind of this flat area of really not a lot going on. 
So uh, you can also run into some sea mounts or, hey, sea mountains, right? This is a cone-shaped mountain peak that rises high above the ocean floor. So sea mount makes sense, mountain in the sea. All right, they're typically found in clusters or rows near plate boundaries, and they are they start out being volcanic, but as we know, like with the Hawaiian Islands and hot spots, it can lose its hot spot because the plate moves over top of the hot spot, um, which is kind of what's going on here. A guyote. A guyote is a flat-topped sea mount. So you see, this is a guyote. This is a sea mount. All right, guyotes are created because the tops of them have been removed by erosion of water, water erosion, waves and whatnot. An atoll, these are super cool. All right, so again, we're gonna have this volcanic island. All right, and then we'll get this coral reef that kind of forms around the volcanic island. That's called a fringing reef. And then as that grows and expands, it's going to be considered a barrier reef. And then if this uh, volcano mountain, volcanic mountain, loses its fuel and it starts to sink, then we're going to end up with this lagoon. Okay, so we're going to have the coral reef with a nice big lagoon in the middle. And that's called an atoll. So here are two pictures that you can see of an atolls. And so this is just a diagram. So again, here, look, we have our coral reef that's built up around the island. And the island has now fallen below sea level. And we're going to get this nice, cool lagoon here. All right, and then here is an actual picture of an atoll. So you can kind of see here is going to be our, our barrier, our coral reef, all right? Our island is kind of sunk down low, so we have this lagoon and a coral reef surrounding it. This video isn't the best animations, but you'll get the idea. Coral islands are formed by coral reefs, which are limestone formations composed of tiny sea organisms and their remains. A coral reef may grow around a sinking volcanic island. Some volcanic islands sink because of a sinking of the ocean floor. As the island sinks, the coral reef continues to grow upward and forms a ring-like barrier reef. After the island has submerged, only a circular reef called an atoll remains. So, a ring of coral with no island in the middle, an atoll, atoll. All right, the feature that we should all be super duper familiar with is a trench, right? Here's our trench. All right, it's narrow, it's deep, and it's caused by two plates going like this, which is called convergent. Remember, the more dense plate will sink, all right? And once it goes back into this nice hot mantle, it'll melt, cause the plate to melt. Magma will rise, creating a, an island or sea mounts next to a trench. Okay, And they can be as deep as 11 kilometers below sea level. Last feature, but it once again review, mid-ocean ridge, right? So this is where, under sea mountain range, we have... Two plates moving apart, causing magma to rise, and we're creating new crust here. Remember, they're typically found in the middle of the ocean, like our, you know, our more, our Atlantic mid-ocean ridge. All right, so rift valleys, so here's our rift, here's our rift valley, 